on the shores of beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Walking in Victory with Bishop Neil C. Ellis. The powerful and prophetic ministry of Bishop Neil C. Ellis is impacting the lives of believers all around the world. His bold and forthright presentation of spiritual truths and biblical principles is sure to change your life forever. Get ready to experience a fresh approach to ministry as this anointed author and pastor teaches us how to walk in victory. Walking in victory. in a poem, it couldn't be done. I echo them now. Somebody said it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't, but he wouldn't be the one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled right in with a grin on his face. If he worried, he sure hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one has ever done it. But he took off his coat and took off his hat, and the next thing we knew, he'd begun it. With a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quitting, he started to sing as he tackled a thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done and you'll do it. I begin this message today by quoting a portion of the prophetic word that the Lord had me to share. Hear ye, hear ye. A failure you will never be. Look to me and listen very carefully. There are things I've already written in your heart, said the Lord. I've written those things in your heart from I formed you in the womb. And now in this season, I'm about to stir them up and pull them out of you. We need to really pay attention to what God is doing the remainder of this month and throughout this year. Let's read that congregational piece there together, please. Begin. The, the next, next 11, 11 months is about time and space that God has put in place for me to step into a higher expression of myself. Something that has been tied up in my belly and shut up in my spirit is being released. The crisis, the chaos, and the challenges of 2020 help to bring me to a place of maturity that I can now step into. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, life is a series of preparatory moments 
that get us ready for major moments. And each event in your life is didactic. They are teaching moments. Moments of training and development. There are life's lessons in each experience you go through. As children of God, it is so important for us to be vigilant and sensitive to all the things that life brings us. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad. The things we plan for and the things that catch us by surprise. We must keep our spiritual radars on so that we will always be able to discern what it is that God is say, saying to us in each of these experiences. Then we must find the strength and courage to respond positively to each of these experiences. That brings me to this whole issue of courage. Courage, my friend, is bravery in the face of danger. I won't be afraid. Steadfastness in the face of opposition. I won't give up, no matter what. Action in the face of resistance. I will not be intimidated. And optimism in the face of despair. I won't lose hope. So courage is the ability to face and deal with a dangerous or difficult situation. To face and deal with. A difficult situation. Listen to this admonition by someone whose name I wish not to call. Lack of courage is one of my biggest challenges. There are many things that I want to try, places I want to go, and business ventures I wish to embark upon. However, I am constantly living with regrets because I lacked the courage to step out in faith and do the things I desired to do. Now, last week I shared with you as we talk about creativity that when God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, we took on the image of God, the DNA of God, who is the creator of heaven and earth. So if God is a creator and we took on his image... And his DNA is flowing through our veins, then that makes us creators as well. So creativity is in our blood. We were born to be creative. But unlike creativity, no one is born with courage. Courage must be cultivated. You get courage by doing difficult things. The opposite of courage is not cowardice. It's conformity. Even a dead fish can go with the flow. But it takes courage. To chart your own course. Or as my grandfather would say, to cut bush for yourself. Anytime you're at a place where something is about to break for you. Believe me, you will find yourself in the valley of discouragement. 
and in the presence of fear. The fear of criticism. What will they think of me? The fear of responsibility. What if I don't handle it well? The fear of failure. What if I blow it? Then ever fear takes you into the valley of discouragement, fear will stifle your creativity. Fear will chip away at your courage and bit by bit rob you of your confidence. The enemy, my friends, bring fear into our lives to paralyze us and to strangle our ability to think, to imagine, to believe, to dream, to act. My beloved family, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is moving forward in spite of fear. The reality is, where there is no fear, there is no courage. So you've got to acknowledge your fears, but don't allow your fears to paralyze you. And this year, what you fear, you must face. Let me say that one more time. This year, what you fear, you must face. In the midst of this global pandemic, we cannot allow fear to take ownership of our emotions, our choices, and our decisions. Courage is facing a fear or jumping into something even if you are unsure of the outcome. Now, I want you to hear me carefully because chances are, my friends, that if you take stock in yourselves, your thoughts, and your actions, you may very well find that you have more courage than you are giving yourselves credit for. Okay, now, look, look at verse 6, 7, and 9. Give me verse 6, first of all, please, Brother Neely. Be strong and of good courage. That's all I want. Go to the next one, verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Okay, and go to verse 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Now the first thing you got to understand here is in each of these things, verses here, where God has given the instructions to Joshua about his new assignment as the leader of the children of Israel, the successor of Moses. He is not asking questions. God is not making suggestions to Joshua. He's giving commands. Be strong and of a good courage. That's a command. Be thou strong and very courageous. That's a command. Be strong and of a good courage. That's a command, ladies and gentlemen. When you listen to what God is saying in this year's vision, this is not the year to put limits on your life, your dreams, or your potential. He is not in the mood for questioning. He is giving you commands. Be strong and of a good courage. In other words, be what you are. Strong and courageous. Ladies and gentlemen, may I, may I help you for a moment? Because I have been sent here today and assured by heaven that everyone I shall speak to in the house and around the world, if you're listening to this voice right now, it's because you are strong and you are courageous. And he says, be who you are. Don't allow this crisis to change you. Don't allow the challenges of this life to change you. Don't let this pandemic change who you are and who you know you are. You are strong. 
strong superhero and courageous. I, I, I want you to just elbow somebody and say, be who you are. Hmm. Let's put this in context. Read verse 1 for me, please. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. Who spoke? The Lord. Okay. Spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying. Now, the remainder of our text from verse 2 to 9 is God speaking. Let's go to verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Uh-huh. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people. Notice the assignment. Joshua is being commanded by God to get up and do what he's asking him to do. Not asking him, telling him to do. Arise, go over this Jordan. And I don't want you to go by yourself. All of these people, all the millions of them, I want you to go over to the land, which land namely? Which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of their foot will thread upon, I have given you. All right, watch this now. He says, get up. Take action. I have given you wherever it is you have the courage to walk on. He said, all of this is yours. But only courage will give it to you. I have given you the whole thing. But whatever you put your foot on, whatever you have the courage to rise up and face, I will give to you. Hmm. Lord, have mercy. All right, he gives us, he gives us a little idea of the scope of what he's prepared to give. Verse 4, Neely. From the wilderness and this Lebanon. That's Lebanon now in the north. Go as ahead. far as the great river Euphrates. Uh, that's in the northeast. Go ahead. All the land of the Hittites. Uh-huh. And to the great sea. The great sea, you're talking about the Mediterranean Sea. Uh-huh. Toward the going down of the sun. What's going to happen to all that? Shall be your territory. Lord, have mercy. I know I'm speaking to some people here, but I'm speaking to some people in at least six different countries, including the Bahamas, who are listening to me right now. Because during the week, I've been hearing two words. The first one I'm going to tell you is this. Land. Or property. All right? Now, I want you to read from verse 4 again, please. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, uh -huh. as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, uh -huh. all the land of the Hittites, uh -huh. and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, uh -huh. shall be your territory. This is a scope of more than 200 miles of property. He says, now, I'm going to give you all, all of that. But you will only have as much as you have courage for. In other words, I've made provision, but I'm not going to drop it in your lap. You have to arise. Lord, have mercy. And go over this Jordan. Jordan represents any obstacle. If you can get the land, if you're going to take territory, you got to cross over the Jordan. In other words, the Jordan is standing between these instructions and your possession. If you have the courage, or oh, y'all ain't gonna help me to get up from where you are and cross the Jordan, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, let me help you with something. I need to let you know that the B in verse 6 
and the bee. In verse 7, and the bee. In verse 9, is the same bee in Genesis 1, 3. So let's look at it. Let's in look at the, Genesis 1 from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Uh -huh. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Uh -huh. Then God said, let, let there be. Same word. In the Hebrew, same word. The let there be is the same word in Joshua 1, 6. Be strong. In Joshua 1, 7. Be very strong. In Joshua 1, 9. Be strong. Same be. Now watch this now. Read the whole of verse 3, please, John. Then God said. What he said? Let there be light. And what happened? And there was light. So what, you, what translation. Then God said. Light. Be. And guess what happened? Light was. And guess what's happening millions of years later? Light still is. Yo. Okay. Now watch this. The same be in Genesis 1-3 is the same be in Genesis 1-28. So let's read verses 27, 26, 27, and 8 in Genesis 1. Then God said, uh -huh. let us make man in our image uh -huh. according to our likeness. Uh -huh. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, uh -huh. over the birds of the air, uh -huh. and over the cattle, uh -huh. over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. Uh -huh. In the image of God he created him. Uh -huh. Male and female he created them. Uh -huh. Then God blessed them. And God said to them. And said to them. Be. be. Stop right there. Because this be is the same be in Genesis 1 and 3. Are y'all listening? And those two bees be the same bee in Joshua 1 and 6 and Joshua 1 and 7 and Joshua 1 and 9. It's B, 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 B. Same thing. Same thing. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to notice what God says to be in 28. Fruitful. Be fruitful. What else? And multiply. And multiply. What else? Fill the earth and subdue it. Uh -huh. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, uh -huh. over the birds of the air, uh -huh. and over every living thing that moves In on the words, earth. In other words, be fruitful. What else is there? And multiply. Be about the business of expansion. And what else? Fill the earth and subdue it. Be about your duty of filling the earth and taking charge of the earth and taking dominion over the earth. Because ladies and gentlemen, every creeping thing, every living thing, and every subject and object in this world, God says, ought to take instructions from you. In other words, be healthy. In other words, subdue sickness. Prosperous. Take dominion over poverty. Y'all ain't listening. He's saying, be strong and be courageous. I know there are giants in your life, but get up and be who you are. Strong and courageous. Somebody ought to bless him there. Strong. Be courageous. Be fruitful and multiply. I trust you've gotten all of that message today. I know you couldn't hear it in its entirety. I want to encourage you to get it so you can listen to the whole thing because it is designed and it was given to me by God to bring you to the place where 
you have the courage to stand up against anything that's coming against you to prevent you from doing what God wants you to do. Well, we are really out of time now. I pray that whatever else you do the rest of this month, the rest of this year, remember this. You've been anointed to courageously walk in victory. I'll see you next time. Bishop Neil C. Ellis and the Mount Tabor Church family in Nassau, Bahamas, wish to thank you for viewing the Walking in Victory broadcast and invite you to tune in next week to experience this powerful prophetic ministry. Should you wish to correspond with Bishop Ellis, please write him at P.O. Box N9705, Nassau, Bahamas, or email him at info at neilellisministries.com. Walking in Victory